Andrew Yang. If you've heard anything about me and my campaign, you've heard that someone is running for president who wants to give every American $1,000 a month. I know this may sound like a gimmick, but this is a deeply American idea from Thomas Paine to Martin Luther King to today. Let me tell you why we need to do it and how we pay for it. Why do we need to do it? We already automated away millions of manufacturing jobs, and chances are your job could be next. If you don't believe me, just ask an auto worker here in Detroit. How do we pay for it? Raise your hand in the crowd if you've seen stores closing where you live. It is not just you. Amazon is closing 30% of America's stores and malls and paying zero in taxes while doing it. We need to do the opposite of much of what we're doing right now, and the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. <laughs> So let me share the math. $1,000 a month for every adult would be $461 million every month right here in Detroit alone. The automation of our jobs is a central challenge facing us today. It is why Donald Trump is our president, and any politician not addressing it is failing the American people. Uh, Mr. Yang, I want to bring you in. You support a Medicare for all system. How do you respond to Governor Inslee? Well, I just want to share a story. When I told my wife I was running for president, you know the first question she asked me? What are we going to do about our health care? That's a true story, and it's not just us. Democrats are talking about health care in the wrong way. As someone who's run a business, I can tell you flat out our current health care system makes it harder to hire, it makes it harder to treat people well and give them benefits and treat them as full-time employees, it makes it harder to switch jobs, as Senator Harris just said, and it's certainly a lot harder to start a business. If we say, look, we're going to get health care off the backs of businesses and families, then watch American entrepreneurship recover and bloom. That's the argument we should be making to the American people. Right. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Mayor de Blasio. I'm the son of immigrants myself. My father immigrated here as a graduate student and generated over 65 US patents for GE and IBM. I think that's a pretty good deal for the United States. That's the immigration story we need to be telling. We can't always be focusing on some of the, 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 the distressed stories. And if you go to a factory here in Michigan, you will not find wall-to-wall -wall immigrants. You will find wall-to-wall -wall robots and machines. Immigrants are being scapegoated for issues they have nothing to do with in our economy. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Mr. Yang, why are you the best candidate to heal the racial divide in America? Your response. I spent seven years running a nonprofit that helped create thousands of jobs, including hundreds right here in Detroit, as well as Baltimore, Cleveland, New Orleans. And I saw that the racial disparities are much, much worse than I'd ever imagined. They're even worse still. A study just came out that projected the average Ameri African American median net worth will be zero by 2053. So you have to ask yourself, how is that possible? It's possible because we're in the midst of the greatest economic transformation in our history. Artificial intelligence is coming. It's going to displace hundreds of thousands of call center workers, truck drivers, the most common job in 29 states, including this one. And you know who suffers most in a natural disaster. It's people of color, people who have lower levels of capital and education and resources. So what are we going to do about it? We should just go back to the writings of Martin Luther King who in 1967, his book, Chaos or Community, said we need a guaranteed minimum income in the United States of America. That is the most effective way for us to address racial inequality in a genuine way and give every American a chance in the 21st century economy. Mr. Yang, thank you very much. In poll after poll, Democratic voters saying that having a nominee who can beat President Trump is more important to them than having a nominee who agrees with them on major issues. And right now, according to polls, they say the candidate who has the best chance of doing that, of beating President Trump, is Vice President Biden. Why are they wrong? Well, I'm building a coalition of disaffected Trump voters, independents, libertarians, and conservatives, as well as Democrats and progressives. I believe I'm the candidate best suited to beat Donald Trump. And as for how to win in Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania, the problem is that so many people feel like the economy has left them behind. What we have to do is we have to say, look, there's record high GDP and stock market prices. You know what else are at record highs? Suicides, drug overdoses, depression, anxiety. It's gotten so bad that American life expectancy has declined for the last three years. 
And I like to talk about my wife who's at home with our two boys right now, one of whom is autistic. What does her work count at in today's economy? Zero, and we know that's the opposite of the truth. We know that her work is among the most challenging and vital. Mr. Yang, women on average urge, earn 80 cents, about 80 cents for every dollar earned by men. <clears throat> Senator Harris wants to find companies that don't close their gender pay gaps. As an entrepreneur, do you think a stiff fine will change how companies pay their female employees? I have seen firsthand the inequities in the business world where women are concerned, particularly in startups and entrepreneurship. We have to do more at every step. And if you're a woman entrepreneur, the obstacles start not just at home, but then when you seek an, a mentor or an investor, often they don't look like you and they might not think your idea is the right one. In order to give women a leg up, what we have to do is we have to think about women in every situation, including the ones who are in exploitative and abusive jobs and relationships around the country. I'm talking about the waitress who's getting harassed by her boss at the diner, who might have a business idea, but right now is stuck where she is. What we have to do is we have to give women the economic freedom to be able to improve their own situations and start businesses. And the best way to do this is by putting a dividend of $1,000 a month into their hands. It would be a game changer for women around the country because we know that women do more of the unrecognized and uncompensated work in our society. It will not change unless we change it. And I say that's just what we do. You know what the talking heads couldn't stop talking about after the last debate? It's not the fact that I'm somehow number four on the stage in national polling. It was the fact that I wasn't wearing a tie. Instead of talking about automation and our future, including the fact that we automated away four million manufacturing jobs, hundreds of thousands right here in Michigan, we're up here with makeup on our faces and our rehearsed attack lines, playing roles in this reality TV show. It's one reason why we elected a reality TV star as our president. We need to be laser focused on solving the real challenges of today, like the fact that the most common jo jobs in America may not exist in a decade, or that most Americans cannot pay their bills. My flagship proposal, the Freedom Dividend, would put $1,000 a month into the hands of every American adult be a game changer for millions of American families. If you care more about your family and your kids than my neckwear, enter your zip code at yang2020.com and see what $1,000 a month would mean to your community. I have done the math, it's not left, it's not right, it's forward, and that is how we're going to beat Donald Trump in 2020. Senator Booker.